Hey guys, how many of us are groaning out there today? I know we all are, I know I am, but we have a future hope of glory, guys. Resurrection cometh. Guys, we are encouraged not to lose heart because of the suffering and pain we all experience in our fallen, dying bodies. We may be living in an earthen vessel, a frail and deteriorating human frame, but as believers, we have the indwelling spirit of the eternal God in our heart and have received absolute assurance of our secure heavenly destinations. Never forget that, guys. The Apostle Paul set out a most comprehensive discourse on the resurrection of the body and life everlasting for all who are positioned in Christ. Paul contrasts our present condition with our future dwelling place and encourages us not to lose heart when encompassed about by persecution and pain or even when hard pressed on every side. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5. In uh, 2 Corinthians 5 verses 1 and 2, it says, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. Guys, chapter 5 is kind of a continuation without interruption from from the uh, end of chapter 4, 2 Corinthians 4. In 2 Corinthians 4, verses 4 through 18, it had said, We know that God who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present us to himself together with you. All of this is for your benefit. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving. And God will receive more and more glory. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. Guys, glory to God. I'm longing for that day. You know, and like I said, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 kind of continues with Paul's honest description of the experience of life on this side of eternity. He calls our temporary bodies tents. They are not meant to last forever. And while we live in them, we groan in longing for our permanent home with God and eternal, unburdened, new glorified bodies. For believers in Jesus, Paul describes death as that which is mortal, being swallowed up by life, swallowed up by life. God has prepared eternal bodies for all who are in Christ and has given to them the Holy Spirit as a guarantee of what we will receive when this life is done. And it's glory, I can't hardly wait. Paul acknowledges that he is ready to be at home with the Lord right now, free of his earthly body. Now, guys, he is not suicidal. He simply recognizes how much more glorious that experience will be. And, guys, I know that's what we are all longing for. But in the meantime, this knowledge gives him the courage to fearlessly risk everything for the mission God has given him. He walks by faith in that reality and not according to the reality he sees with his 
physical eyes. Guys, that's exactly what God wants you and I to do. Don't look at the things which are seen. Keep your eyes focused on the things that are unseen. That makes Paul's goal simple, to please God for as long as he lives. He is motivated in part by an awareness that all Christians will stand at the Bama seat or the reward seat of Christ one day. Uh, this is not to decide the Bama seat, the reward seat of Christ, the judgment seat of Christ is not to decide their eternal destiny, but to determine rewards for whatever earthly works they did, whether good or bad. Paul turns his attention back to the Corinthians. Because of all this, he writes, he and his co-workers continue to be motiva motivated to persuade others to believe the gospel. He insists that God knows they have no other agenda. He hopes the Corinthians who know him are convinced of this as well. That knowledge will embolden them to answer Paul's critics, those who are judging him by the outward appearances of his circumstances. Some may have suggested that Paul's mental health was in question because he continued to preach the gospel despite continually suffering for it. Guys, if you're anything like me, yeah, I'm crazy, but I'm crazy about Jesus, y'all. Paul, though, emphasizes again that he can do nothing else. Christ's love, Christ's love compels him to keep telling everyone that Christ died for all so they too can live for Christ. Glory. Paul describes his changed perspective. He now views every person as an eternal being and not merely according to the flesh. That began when he learned Christ was more than just a man. Anyone who is in Christ becomes like Christ. That person is a new creation. The old version of who they were is gone, replaced by the new Christ-like version. Once God reconciled Paul to himself, Paul's life's work, his life's work became telling others about this message of reconciliation. In Christ, God is not counting people's sins against them. God made the sinless Jesus to be sin in order to declare all who trust in him uh, righteous people rather than sinful people. In Paul's role as Christ's ambassador on earth, he implores everyone he can to be reconciled to God in this way. Guys, let's Abba up. Let's Abba up. Because it won't be long until we go up to meet our Lord in the air. We are ambassadors for Christ. Let's stay the course God has set before us and never, ever forget that as ambassadors, God will evacuate us all just at the precise time he had ordained even before the foundation of the world. Guys, the war of tribulation is just over the horizon, but the rapture comes first. In the meantime, keep preaching and keep being a gospel light for the world. When I worked in a steel fabrication shops years ago, you know, back, especially back when I was a supervisor, one of my men used to say, well, boss, if this job was an easy job to do, then everybody would want to do it. Guys, it can absolutely be the same way as we continue to press forward through this haze and maze of what we call life telling everybody about Jesus, especially in this very current prophetic season. Guys, it ain't easy. If it were easy, then every Christian would want to do it. The struggles and pains are very real, but so is the overwhelming power of God. Don't lose heart. We fly soon.
Guys, we can't wait to see you on the other side. That day is fast approaching, soon approaching. Oh, glory, I feel I feel God all over me. Guys, it's not going to be long. Don't lose hope in the God of hope. We're getting ready to go. God bless each of you and Maranatha. For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is, when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself, and not by human hands. We grow weary in our present bodies, and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing, for we will put on heavenly bodies, we will not be spirits without bodies. While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and sigh. But it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies, so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. God himself has prepared us for this, and as a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. So we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. For we live by believing, and not by seeing. Yes, we are fully confident, and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies, for then we will be at home with the Lord. So, whether we are here in this body, or away from this body, our goal is to please Him. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. We are God's ambassadors. Because we understand our fearful responsibility to the Lord, we work hard to persuade others. God knows we are sincere, and I hope you know this too. Are we commending ourselves to you again? No, we are giving you a reason to be proud of us, so you can answer those who brag about having a spectacular ministry rather than having a sincere heart. If it seems we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. And if we are in our right minds, it is for your benefit. Either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ, who died and was raised for them. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view, how differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God, who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Father, heal each one within the sound of our voice, God. Give them hope. Give them hope. Give them health. Give them healing. Give them your everything, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, In Jesus. Jesus' name. The Most High God knows every star by name. 
Amen. The billions upon billions upon billions of stars, he knows each one by name. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows what hurts you and has hurt you. He knows the sickness you're enduring. God is breaking in with breakthrough. The anointing of God is piercing through ooh, the darkness that has surrounded you. Reach out, receive it, claim it. God will make a way where there seems no way. Amen. God is going to make a way for you to come up and out of the pain that's been holding you down. I thank you that you touch everyone's body, everyone's mind, everyone's everything that's watching this this broadcast, Lord God. Touch them, yes, heal them, Lord. save them to the uttermost, Lord. Show yourself strong yes. in their lives. Yes. Show that God yes, is God, God and He is well able. He is yes. more than able. Susie, just say a quick salvation prayer right now. Okay, right repeat now. this prayer with us if you need Jesus. Father in heaven, thank you for sending your son Jesus thank you. to pay the penalty of my sins by dying on the cross in my place. Thank you, Lord, that he died on the cross, but then the third day he rose again so that I can live a life of victory. Lord, I ask you to be Lord of my life and come into my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So if you prayed that prayer in faith, believing you're now a child of God. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. Your, <laughs> your past is past. Amen. Your sins are under the blood. They're behind you. And, and now the, walk forward in, in God. And the Most High wanted me to tell you, do not look behind you because you're not going that way. You keep moving forward. Keep your eyes on the prize which is before you. Amen. Thank you, Lord.